This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. And welcome back to the Exxon. This is the Exxon Radio Show with yours truly, Rob McConnell. We're coming to you live and around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Toll-free worldwide, 1-800-610-7035. Email xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, xzoneradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www.xzoneradiotv.com. My guest this hour, Exxon Nation, is Dr. Bob Thiel, and uh, he was born in Michigan. He has uh, studied philosophy, religion, research, science, and prophecy, both formally and informally, for several decades. Bob Thiel has a master's degree from the University of Southern California and a Ph.D. from the Union Institute uh, and University. In the past 12 years, he has had scores of articles published on topics in a variety of print publications such as magazines, newspapers, and journals. And he's been a lifelong researcher and received several research awards. He has also worked for geotechnical and other research companies. Now we're going to be talking to Dr. Thiel about his new book. And we're also going to be talking to him about the Mayan prophecies and what is behind the Mayan prophecies, if anything. Joining me now from California is Dr. Thiel. And uh, Dr. Bob, welcome to the X-Zone. How are things with you? And tell me, is 2012 science or superstition? Well, a little of both, I suppose. Um, the, the reality is that the Mayans did have predictions related to 2012. Mm-hmm. And I've actually heard so-called experts who have have doctors after their name or before their name who claim that the Mayans never predicted the end of the world or they didn't predict things such as uh, what Sony's uh, current movie per, uh, portrays. Right. But that's actually not true. The Mayans absolutely did uh, forecast that the world would end December 21st, 2012. And, and actually, uh, when they first learned how to write in the 16th century, and I quote this in my book, mm-hmm. they specifically say that... Uh, when the law of the Katun, which is their version of the calendar, so when the calendar ends, which is December 21st, 2012, that God will bring about a deluge, which will be the end of the world. So they absolutely did predict the, the world will end. Now, is that a fact? It's a fact that they predicted it, yes. Is it going to happen? Uh, I don't believe so. So those who believe it, I guess you could say, are accepting superstition. But they absolutely did predict it. And that's sort of, if you've seen Sony's movie uh, or, or not, that's what it seems to do. It's ba- it seems to be loosely based on the, the Mayan predictions. Right, but we're also talking about the same people who produced uh, Independence Day as the world got taken over, or nearly taken over, by aliens. So, Well, that's true, except that the, the reason the Mayans uh, have a little bit more credibility in the eyes of some mm-hmm. are two factors. One, they were the world's most accurate astronomers uh, at the time, and they didn't have telescopes, etc., you know, like we have now. And secondly... I mean, their calendar was more accurate than ours, but because they were astronomers, uh, some believe that they predicted an alignment uh, basically between the sun being in the center mm-hmm. of the Milky Way galaxy, and that that was supposed to happen December 21st, 2012. And some astronomers don't consider that it's actually an alignment. Other people say that it is, so there's some dispute about that. Well, let's talk but, more about this when we come back from this two-minute commercial break. Dr. Dr. Bob Thiel is our very special guest, ex Nation. We're talking about his new book, 2012, the Rise, uh, 2012 and the Rise of the Secret Sect. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon on Talkstar. And you can uh, check Dr. Thiel's website at thesecretsect.com. We'll be back in two minutes as we continue live and around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. We're right here in the Exxon. Don't go away. We'll be back on the other side of this two-minute break. This is Kevin Randall, 
For nearly 30 years, I have been investigating the case of the Roswell UFO. I have interviewed hundreds of people and stood on the crash site. Now in Roswell in the 21st century, I have reviewed dozens of hours of audio and videotaped interviews, examined hundreds of files that relate to the crash, and have returned to Roswell in an attempt to put all that information into the proper perspective. For the first time in Roswell in the 21st century, I have made a dispassionate reevaluation of all that material and provide a new look at what happened. This is a book that clears away all the clutter that has hidden the truth for so long, strips away the various lies that surround the case, exposes the Air Force attempts at cover-up, and found a core of solid information that tells us all where the case stands today. Roswell in the 21st century will be available in just a few weeks. For more information, please visit my website at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. Gibbs A. Williams, Ph.D., is a practicing psychoanalyst, supervisor, researcher, and author in New York City. Much of his life has been dedicated to understanding nature and the uses of meaningful coincidences or synchronicities. His radical and original non-Jungian, non-mystical, non-magical theory of synchronicities illuminates much of the fog surrounding this challenging and perplexing topic. His ideas and manners are fresh, presented in a style that is both entertaining and highly informative. He is also an expert on crisis intervention specially focused on violence reduction for the police and citizens, mastering anxiety, frustration and stress without the use of medication, and effectively preventing and treating heroin addiction. Dr. Williams can be contacted at his email address at gwwilliamsny11 at aol.com or visit his website at www.drgibbswilliams.com. Shamanism is recognized as a method to access the quantum level. Mastery of shamanic skills puts spiritual information and healing power into your hands. Path Home Shamanic Art School, a bonded Colorado certified occupational school, has met rigorous state standards ensuring its director and instructors have the qualifications to teach the shamanic arts. Path Home offers a certification program in blocks of study. Block 1, a five-day intensive, will be held in the beautiful mountain town of Coldale, Colorado, October 13th through 18th. Registration deadline is September 12th. Experience journey trance, power animals, helping spirits, sacred space, and life purpose. Come discover your power. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, in the magical world of shamanism. Call 303-775-3431 or visit findyourpathhome.com. With each new extreme weather event or terrorist act, it becomes increasingly obvious that we live in uncertain and challenging times. We all buy car insurance. Why not collapse and catastrophe insurance? Matthew Stein, an MIT-trained engineer and green builder, has written two outstanding books to help people prepare, plan for, and deal with everything from minor situations lasting a few days to full-on collapse. Matt's first book, When Technology Fails, is a manual for self-reliance, sustainable living, and surviving the long emergency. This massive book covers the gamut from first aid and emergency preparedness to alternative healing, renewable energy, primitive living skills, and 18th century technologies that could be critical to your comfort and survival in a long-lasting crisis. Matt's second book, When Disaster Strikes, is a comprehensive emergency preparedness handbook and survival guide. When Disaster Strikes is an essential item for every family's go-bag. Both books are available at all usual sources. There's a wealth of totally free information posted at whentechfails.com and author signed copies may be purchased at mattstein.com. That's www.wentechfails.com and www.mattstein.com. Dr. Bob Thiel is my special guest. We're talking about his new book, 2012 and the Rise of the Secret Sect. His website is www.thesecretsect.com. Dr. Bob, I have to ask you this. Where, sir, did the Mayan get their knowledge of astronomy? Today we need telescopes, we need satellites, we need computers. They didn't have any of that. No, they didn't have any of that at all. As a matter of fact, as far as we know, the way they got their knowledge, uh, and they may have learned, some, they may have had some other sources, but mm -hmm. the primary way we think they got it was basically through observation. Uh, they, you know, back 
in the old days before there were uh, lights and electricity, you could see the stars. And remember, there wasn't television on at night or, or movies or such. So a lot of times people spent a lot of time looking at the stars. And the Mayans got fascinated about it. Uh, part of the reason that a lot of ancient cultures looked at the stars, however, was in order to come up with some type of a calendar so they could know when to plant and when to harvest and that kind of a thing. But my suspicion is that one of the Mayan leaders decided to focus more on that and also they got involved with their religious rituals. And they just took it to the extreme that they were going to do it. So uh, they were diligent and they collected lots and lots of data and did calculations, and I started to find out that a lot of their calculations were coming to pass, and that reinforced their uh, uh, enthusiasm, if you will, for focusing on the calendar. Tell me, of all the 2012 prophecies, why is the Mayan prophecy the one that's gotten all of the attention? Well, I think two or three reasons. One is the fact, because of the Mayan calendar being so accurate, that that was head and shoulders above some of the others. Secondly, the specific date. Uh, for example, I've heard some say that the I Ching predicts that the world will end uh, December 21st, 2012. But originally, the people who came up with that calculation had, had a different date. So there's, there's, so there's a, uh, some credibility issues there. Um, there's a Hindu prophet who says that the world will end on that date as well, but most Hindus don't believe it will be in 2012. They're looking for something like 2014, 15, or 16. But the Mayan one, the date is absolutely clear. So we've got a clear date from a people who has a knowledge of astronomy and a people who many believe predicted a galactic alignment to occur at the same time. So those, that combination of factors is basically why a lot of people paid attention to it. It really got popularized, though, by uh, some people in the New Age movement. Uh, Dr. Uh, Jose Arguez uh, had noted when the Mayan calendar ended and this idea about a galactic alignment. And he also noticed that some Tibetan prophecies indicated some good things would start to happen perhaps in 2012. So he actually started to popularize it, he and some of his colleagues, decades ago, and they believe that when the world, that they don't believe the world will end in 2012, by the way, they believe that the day after the calendar ends, that mm -hmm. a new age of peace is going to dawn on humankind. And they're the ones who originally got it popular. Other people, though, started to look at it and said, wait a second, the Mayans seem to predict some bad things. And so you may have seen on the History Channel, the Discovery Channel, sci-fi, and even uh, network television, some specials or some documentaries about predictions related to doom or possible doom in 2012. Uh, and that all basically came because originally people in the New Age movement seemed to popularize the date. All right. Now, Sony has come out with their movie 2012, and, and uh, you know, like the great special effects, John Cusack. I think he's a great actor. What was your impression, and, and how accurate was it? Well, if accurate you mean, is it a potential depiction of what the Mayans predicted, then the answer is yes. It's, it's accurate. I mean, the Mayan mm -hmm. calendar clearly says that uh, the world will end in a flood. Uh, and there's some indications in other parts of Mayan writings that that, that doesn't necessarily mean that everybody would die. So how the movie portrayed the end, if you will, uh, is essentially Hollywood's take on the Mayan uh, writings, but it wasn't that far off. I mean, uh, whether the world would actually get together and do what they say in a Sony movie, I don't want to, to uh, spoil it for people who haven't seen it, is another matter. But the idea that uh, there could be disturbances, uh, fire from the sky, uh, earthquakes, uh, uh, and a devastating flood, that is consistent with uh, Mayan writings. But the, the possibility of a global flood, isn't that a little far-fetched? Well, all cultures, almost all ancient cult, many ancient cultures actually said that there was a, a worldwide flood in the past. And it's not totally far-fetched in the sense that if you actually melted uh, the glaciers as well as uh, got some of the groundwater uh, up to the mm -hmm. surface, uh, you could do a pretty good job of covering up uh, most, of the, most of the current world. Now, if you're asking me if I think it's plausible or if I think it's going to happen in 2012, I'm going to tell you no. But I do believe that sometime after 2012, we could have devastating earthquakes, and I expect to have devastating earthquakes that could eliminate most, if not all, the islands. So um, it may not be uh, the entire world going with, with a flood, but I do uh, believe flooding will happen, especially in a lot of the islands in the world. Sometime, but it'll be after 2012. 
1-800-610-7035 is toll-free worldwide. Email xzone at xzoneradiotv.com and our website, www.xzoneradiotv.com. Now, according to the prophecy, will the United States be invaded, invaded by our allies in Europe or China? Uh, there are a lot of prophecies that suggest that the United States, and by the way, probably would include Canada, mm-hmm. uh, would be uh, invaded by uh, our European allies. This comes from both biblical prophecies, uh, Byzantine prophecies, and uh, Catholic prophecies. All of those seem to line up with the uh, probability that uh, something will happen in Europe and that uh, a major power will emerge over there. And after this major power emerges, uh, something will apparently upset it with the United States, and it, it, this will lead to invasion. And this was actually first prophesied. Uh, the first prophecy I've seen of it outside of the Bible uh, comes from about 500 uh, A.D., where uh, there was a Catholic saint who, who predicted that somebody called the great monarch would rise up, and he would conquer uh, uh, England and the uh, other island empires. Now, I say England, I should put it in quotes, because there was no nation of England at the time this prophecy was written. That's right. It didn't come until, until later. So the, I, I haven't seen the prophecy in the original language, only in the translations. And so this appears to be referring to the Anglo-Saxon peoples. So that's the earliest one that I've seen uh, in uh, uh, non-biblical sources that suggest that uh, a leader will rise up and ultimately uh, invade the, basically the Anglo nation, Anglo-descended nations, which although all these countries are now multicultural, you know, the United States and Canada and yeah. Britain and all that. I mean, there's a lot of people from lots of, lots of lands, and uh, I'm not particularly... British myself, uh, ethnically, but that those prophecies are pointing to that. And there are other Catholic and Byzantine prophecies that specify that this great monarch will rise up in Europe. So the first prophecy starts to talk about this monarch rising up uh, and affecting the English-speaking peoples, and there were other prophecies about this monarch also affecting the English-speaking peoples or taking them over. And then other prophecies have said that this is supposed to be a European and that's actually consistent with biblical prophecies as well. But how can we take prophecies so seriously when there have been thousands and thousands of prophecies made since recorded history, and only a very, very small, small percentage have ever come true? Well, you're absolutely right. Uh, most prophecies are, are wrong. They're not going to happen. Um, actually, before I wrote this book on prophecy, I spent more time denouncing false prophets than anything else. Um, I've had people say the world was going to end last year or the year before, sure. uh, various ones. And before the world did not end, I explained uh, at one of my websites basically why I felt that those uh, uh, prophets were in error. I called them false prophets. I explained why that they were in error. On the other hand, that doesn't just because a lot of people have risen up and falsely made predictions doesn't mean that no prophecies have come to pass. Uh, uh, we've seen... Well, people who believe biblical prophecies, for example, let's use this as an example, but okay. would tell you that uh, Jesus was prophesied and then he came to pass. Uh, others would tell you that things such as the uh, destruction of Jerusalem in 70 A.D. was prophesied and that had come to pass. Uh, some believe that the nation of Israel forming uh, was also prophesied and that has come to pass. So there have been predictions out there uh, that uh, have seemingly come to pass uh, from uh, various sources, and because some of these predictions have or appear to have come to pass, uh, some people believe in those prophecies. Now, for example, for decades, I believed, based on my knowledge of biblical prophecy, that the Eastern European nations were part of the old Soviet Union, that they would uh, break away from the Soviet Union, uh, East and West Germany would unite, that a European power would form, that the Europeans would develop their own currency. Yes. And I believed all these things in the 70s. And those, and, uh, those things have come to pass uh, since that time. And again, that's based on my knowledge of, uh, of specifically in this case, biblical prophecy. But, but so, wouldn't you say that your, your knowledge of current events also played a part in this? And you could have, you know, your mind is adding one and one coming to two? Um, I would say perhaps with, with my book, I would say uh, to the degree that's the case, but in, this, in the 70s, uh, there was no real reason to believe that the, uh, 
uh, Eastern European nations were going to break off from uh, from the Soviet bloc, uh, become part of a, of a European uh, empire, if you will, and then develop their own currency. That, I would say, there was really nothing in current world events that would suggest that that would okay. happen. Dr. Bob Thiel, it's always great having you here on the show. Now, you were on with me a couple of months ago, and we were talking about the Mayan prophecy, because this is going to be a hot topic for the next, what, uh, two years, at least. Yes. When we come back, sir, I would appreciate it if you and I could go back to September and see if any of the prophecies or any of the signs that you and I talked about have actually happened. How does that sound? That would be great. All right. Dr. Bob Thiel is our very special guest, Exonation. It's always great having him on the show. Here's his website, www.thesecretsect.com. That's www.thesecretsect.com. And the name of his book is, all right, do you have your pencils and papers? Oh, come on, guys. Get your get your iPads out, whatever you use. Here it is, 2012 and the Rise of the Secret Sect. That's 2012 and the Rise of the Secret Sect. Dr. Bob and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break. And by the way, I will be on the Bill Kelly Show tomorrow from... 11 until noon. You can watch us here in the Hamilton area on Cable 14 and listen to us throughout the province of Ontario on AM 900 CHML. My name's Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. I'll be back on the other side of the news. Don't go away. It was a terrifying experience. I thought we was going to go to jail for murder. That day, you know, we were a little behind, so we worked until it was starting to get dark. We loaded up the equipment and hadn't driven very far when we caught glimmers of this glow coming through the trees. I urged Mike to hurry up and get up there. Travis had the door open before we even stopped. As he got closer, I heard the sound. One of the guys said, you feel that? I really panicked then. I told him, get the hell out of here. It didn't come directly to me. It came to a, a deputy sheriff. Three of us volunteered right away to tell him what had happened. Sheriff Gillespie definitely didn't believe it. He says that we better be certain because we're getting a lot of trouble. When we went to search the next day, they split us up. And the whole time, the deputies asked me, you know, if you just tell us where the body is, we can all go home and get this over with. We're talking about 100 people combing through the wooded area. Nothing turns up. All week long, I've been hearing they're going to set it up to make you guys look guilty. We're a rough-looking bunch, then. Some of us have been in trouble with the law before. And y'all ain't never going to come out of that jailhouse. We couldn't get out. I tried to sneak out the back door the day of the polygraph test. I was scared to death. On top of that, you have media. I literally would be on two telephones at the same time. We even got some coops in here now that's coming in and out to see the freak show, as they call it. Everyone descends. I just wasn't going to stand there listen to it anymore. Granny says, this is Travis. I'm back. I need help. When I did hear that he had been returned, it was almost as unbelievable as the original thing. I just looked at my mom and says, I told you we didn't kill him. Travis Walton reappeared after several days with a bizarre story about a ride in an unidentified flying object. People were desperate to explain it away. Why are you sticking up with Travis for all this time? You know this really didn't happen. What happened to Travis after we took off in that truck, I can't tell you. I hated Travis for a long time after this. My whole world just tore up. But I believe every word Travis said about it. He's never lied to me about nothing. It's a net negative. We lost our jobs in the immediate aftermath. And now you're not able to talk about it with anyone because you know that they're gonna laugh at you, they're gonna look at you like you're crazy. But if you don't come out and tell your story, somebody else is gonna tell it for you. There's a degree of responsibility. But certainly I have to accept the bad. If I can direct what's happened in a way that I can make something good happen in the world, I'm looking for it. Order your copy of Travis, the true story of Travis Walton today at www.travaswaltonthemovie.com. 
Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exome Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, High Tech with Corey Kay, and every minute of the 24-7, 365 programming of the Exome Broadcast Network by calling 712-432-9459, courtesy of TalkStream Live. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 712-432-9459 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 712-432-9459 for the best of paranormal, new age, thought-provoking, sci-fi radio programming 24-7, 365. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition will weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Mutual Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Welcome back, everyone. Dr. Bob Thiel is my special guest. His website is www.thesecretsect.com. He is the author of 2012 and the Rise of the Secret Sect. Dr. Bob, you were on with the show with me, I believe it was September, and you and I were talking about your book. And I was just wondering, have any of the the signs and the, uh, signs of the times or any of the events that you talked about in your book actually happened between then and now? Actually, yes. And uh, when I was on last, I hadn't really given any thought. There had been one event, and I just kind of had dismissed it. I hadn't thought too much about it. But yes, actually, since I was on, even though my book primarily focuses on events uh, near 2012 through 2020, uh, as you alluded to, obviously certain things would need to happen first before some of these things would happen. And uh, I've documented at least eight uh, significant world events which line up with the predictions that are made in, in the book 2012 and the Rise of the Secret Sect since it came out in September. What are they? Well, the first one, 
some may dismiss, but my book specifically teaches that the U.S. dollar will ultimately be worthless and be replaced. And on the uh, 7th of uh, September, the Wall Street Journal uh, reported that there was a committee of the United Nations that wants the U.S. dollar uh, to be eliminated as the world's reserve currency. And my book indicates that the U.S. dollar will not be the world's reserve currency. So that was the only thing that happened by the time I was on last at the time, so I didn't bring it, I didn't emphasize that. Well, my book specifically teaches that toward, as we get closer and closer to the end, mm-hmm. we're, and even starting now, that the Vatican is going to compromise in order to try to attract Protestants and, East, and many of the Eastern Orthodox. And on October 20th of 2009, the Vatican actually announced that it would take Anglicans and American Episcopals uh, to become part of the Catholic Church, and that these people could still go to the, have the same rituals that they have, have the same liturgy they have, a lot of the same ceremonies. They can keep their priests, and their priests can even be married. Uh, and that type of pronouncement publicly never has happened before, and that happened on uh, October 20th. Now, I think over time we're going to see more and more compromises mm-hmm. coming out of uh, Vatican City. Well, they have, to beca- to... they have to because they're losing so many people. In order to get the strength back, and uh, strength in numbers means more money into the coffers, they've got to do something. Uh, one would think that they wouldn't compromise uh, certain of their beliefs, and I think you're going to see that the, what's happened with the Anglican situation is just a tip of the iceberg. You're going to see major compromise coming. Mm-hmm. But this, this announcement to try to the Anglicans was a major step, in my opinion, along this line. And that happened, uh, again, that was October 20th. Now, um, my book specifically warns that toward the end, a major united European power is going to rise up. And when I wrote the book, uh, the European Union, while it existed, it's not, it wasn't really a union. What it was is basically a club of friends. There are 27 countries, and if they all agreed on something, then they did it. Mm-hmm. But if, if you were, let's say, France, and you didn't like uh, like the law, some law, let's say related to wine production or something, you could say, "Ah, we're going to opt out. We don't. We're not going to do it." So it was kind of like, you know, we can all get together if we want, but we don't have to if we don't want to. Well, when my book was published, the Irish had voted against this treaty. Uh, the head of the Czech Republic said he wouldn't sign it, and Poland and perhaps some other countries hadn't hadn't approved it yet. Well, the Irish revoted in October of 2009. Uh, October 2nd, I think it was. And uh, they approved it. They changed their mind. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then Poland signed it. Then the United States, uh, uh, we believe, pressured the Czech Republic. And on November 3rd, the Czech court, the Constitutional Court in the Czech Republic, told the president that he needed to sign this, and the president signed it. And when he signed it, and I saw him on BBC America that night, he went out and said that he just signed the sovereignty of his nation. And what he, what he meant by that is now if at least 15 of the 27 countries decide on something, and those 15 countries represent at least two-thirds of the population of the European Union, it's now the law of the land. Yeah. So this is the largest peacetime formation of an empire that's ever happened in the history of humankind. And what really gets me, and I don't know how the news is... Uh, up in Ontario, because I haven't watched Canadian television since I grew up. I used to watch it a lot, actually, growing up. Oh, yeah. uh, but I but I watched the the uh, the news here. I watched uh, four of the networks last night. Uh, I saw uh, CNN, Fox, MSNBC, and BBC America, and none of them mentioned the fact that yesterday the European Empire formed. The European when that treaty was signed about a month ago, it was effective December first. So yesterday, the Europeans went from basically being 27 different countries to essentially one supranational empire. And it wasn't, even, it wasn't even covered in the news to any great degree. I mean, I mean, legitimate news sources did cover it, but as far as television news last night, I, I, I checked those four networks and we yeah. checked them all at least three or four times. Well, I, so think I, la- it. I think last night the eyes of the nation were on President Obama at West Point and his address on what he, what he was going to do with Afghanistan. Well, they absolutely were. But what's interesting about that, my book specifically says that President Obama, this is the fourth item of the ones I've been going through, President Obama would encourage the formation of this European empire. It was reported that uh, his people did that, 
uh, Vice President Biden also met with uh, some of the leaders of the Czech Republic uh, last in October. Mm-hmm. And then once this agreement was signed, President Obama went out and said that this is great because he wanted to have a strength in the EU. My book has said that he is going to support the rise of this European power, and he has definitely done so uh, since, since the book was published. The next item uh, is a little trickier one, and that is my book shows in chapters 5 and 8 that there's going to be a peace deal that will be confirmed by a, a Euro- European leader. And it was reported in November that uh, Mrs. Clinton has a peace deal that was supposed to be secret, it's partially been leaked, that talks about the involvement in order to get a Middle East peace deal. And then on the uh, 13th of uh, November, Voice America reported that the French president, uh, Sarkozy, was holding meetings with Middle Eastern leaders in order to get some type of a peace deal. And then today I read, uh, actually yesterday's news, is Israeli news, I think, that they're aware that the Europeans are probably going to report what they want for a peace deal in the Middle East. Now, I don't know that this deal is going to happen yet, but that when that deal happens, that's actually one of the, most, one of the more significant things proxy watchers should be looking for, and it's documented in my book, because that will set a particular time clock going. And, so, I'm, so, and so, I'm, go I'm, I'd just like to let our listeners know what book we're talking about, in case you're just tuning in right now, Exxon Nation. My special guest is Dr. Bob Thiel. He's the author of 2012 and the Rise of the Secret uh, uh, Secret Sect. His website is www.thesecretsect.com. Now, Bob, Dr. Bob was with us in September. Since then, seven, or is it eight, Bob? Well, it was eight in total, but seven since I was on. Seven, seven a- events that he talked about in his book depicting the Towards the End of the World have actually happened. And right now we're on number one, two, three, four, five, I believe. Right. We, we've gone through the first five of eight. Right. Uh, the next one is kind of surprised me. And say, what do you mean? You wrote a book and it's got predictions and you were a little bit surprised. And that is that my book explains that once the U.S. dollar is worthless, that the European replacement currency is going to find it useful to, to greatly increase gold reserves in order to restore confidence in paper currencies. And what happened in November, two interesting events happened in November. One is that uh, India, the country that people have considered to be poor or backwards yeah. to some, some people thought that way. Well, they bought 200 metric tons of gold bullion from the IMF. Why? Because they think the U.S. dollar is going to uh, go down, and they want this as part of gold as part of their reserve. For their 200, reserve currency. 200 metric tons. How much money is that? It was uh, billions of dollars. And apparently, and, and normally, national governments don't buy uh, gold when gold is high. Mm-hmm. That price? Well, I just checked on the air, uh, and when they bought the gold, I think it was somewhere around 1000 or 1050 an ounce. It was over $1,217 today, and I believe that's the world, that's the record. Unreal. And to me, that is just phenomenal. And it's interesting, because I also found from a report from the, uh, that was put out by the Center for Research on Globalization, it said, quote, the new currency, this is a, a European currency, probably, will we'll have gold backing. So others are starting to say, you know what, with, with governments, especially in the U.S. government, printing lots and lots of money, that people are going to start to look at gold. And I mentioned gold in my book. Matter of fact, I mentioned when it, I think, prophecies show that it will be valuable and when prophecies show that it will not be valuable. And uh, I consider that it would be valuable at this time. I, didn't, I did not, I want to make it clear, I did not specifically say in my book that on December 2nd, gold is going to hit an uh, all-time high. I didn't say anything like that. I did say, however, that gold would be valuable for, for a period of time and, uh, and be likely to be used as a backup for a world reserve currency. And that's already started to happen. People are talking about this now publicly. And that, not, gold's been, kind of been on the outs for like 10 or 20 years. People have been acting like it's an archaic relic mm-hmm. of the, the Dark Ages. But uh, twelve hundred and seventeen dollars an ounce, or whatever it's at, uh, apparently people are thinking it is uh, is valuable. So that's the sixth thing that my book, uh, uh, sixth world event that has lined up with the predictions in the book. The next one I, I find really fascinating. On page eighty-five of my book, I mentioned that there's a there was a report by the U.S. General Accounting Office that indicated that the United States is going to have problems with their GPS system. 
Now, the GPS system, the global positioning system, is what people use to, uh, if they're lost and that kind of yeah. stuff. But the military also uses it in order to, uh, to, to attack, basically, and hit targets and all that kind of a thing. And when I wrote that chapter of my book back in May, a U.S. Uh, Air Force official, I think it was Lieutenant Colonel, said that this was not going to have any effect on the U.S. military, uh, any minor satellite glitches is of no no consequence. Well, in my book, I said, well, I the Europeans are going to have their own satellite system online called Galileo. It's a GPS system, and it's going online in 2013. They specifically funded it for military reasons, and uh, at least one news source back in May hinted that the United States is probably going to rely on the uh, European GPS system, the Galileo system, for some of its defense starting in around 2013. But again, that was denied by an Air Force uh, spokesperson. Well, guess what? On November 10th of this year, and this is, a, this is from Aviation Week, the, uh, you can, and people can look this up, a U.S. Air Force general, uh, his name is Kevin uh, uh, Chilton, he is the Air Force general in charge of U.S. Strategic Air Command. He said, quote, so few satellites are in queue now for launch for critical missions, such as weather observation satellite, SATCOM, or ballistic mm -hmm. missile warnings, there's a risk of service gaps that may impede military ability to do its job. So my book, I clearly said that I believe that we could have this uh, satellite gap. The satellite gap may result in the United States having to rely for a period of time on a European GPS system, the Galileo system, and that this puts the United States at severe risk of potential attack. And again, the fact that the U.S. Air Force General confirmed that we may have a satellite gap after my book came out, I thought it was very interesting because, again, when I wrote that chapter of the book, the Air Force said there was no not going to be a problem with the U.S. Uh, defense capability with the satellites. And now they've changed their tune. So it seems like... Uh, it I'm just talking about what we talked about tonight, going back to September, eight of these events have taken place. Now, I hazard well, that was seven. I, I hazard oh you've got one more. I've got one more. I and, all right. And the other one I'll be brief on. I because of prophecies that talk about having uh, an interesting military power coming out of Europe, I have speculated that the device called the Large Hadron Collider uh, would be used to develop military technology that uh, could help fulfill those prophecies. Well, when I wrote the book, the Large Hadron Collider didn't work. <laughs> uh, it had failed a bunch of times. Right. And on Monday of this week, it set a new world record for collider speed, and it broke the one the Americans did in 2001. And so, well, that's not proof that this particular device will, will be used for military applications. The fact is the device did work, they're going to have some technical problems with this device off and on. But the book says they're going to use it, they're going to test it, and they're going to develop other technologies from it. And again, they, they set a world record uh, just Monday of this week. Bob, stand by. We've got to take it in our final break. This is scary stuff. I'm going to ask, Bob, when we come back, tell us what, your, what other predictions your book has in store for us. Bob, Dr. Bob Thiel's our special guest, Exxon Nation. His website is thesecretsect.com. The name of his book, 2012 and the Rise of the Secret Sect. Scary stuff. We'll be back on the other side of this break as the Exxon continues. Wouldn't right you love Talkstar. to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash xzone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash xzone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free.
Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exome Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, High Tech with Corey Kay, and every minute of the 24-7, 365 programming of the Exome Broadcast Network by calling 712-432-9459, courtesy of TalkStream Live. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 712-432-9459 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 712-432-9459 for the best of paranormal, new age, thought-provoking, sci-fi radio programming 24-7, 365. Coming soon to the Exxon Broadcast Network is a different perspective with me, Kevin Randall, as your host. We'll be taking a close look at what is happening in the world of UFOs today with side trips into the paranormal. Guests will range from those who are household names to those who have a different perspective on a variety of topics. No topic will be taboo, but there will be tough questions asked as we all search for the truth about UFOs, the paranormal, and those things that excite us. Sometimes we'll agree with a guest and sometimes we won't, but we'll try to keep the program topical. For those of you who would like to read, be sure to visit www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com and remember to listen to the other fine programs on the X-Zone Broadcast Network at www.xzbn.net. This is Kevin Randall. For nearly 30 years, I have been investigating the case of the Roswell UFO. I have interviewed hundreds of people and stood on the crash site. Now in Roswell in the 21st century, I have reviewed dozens of hours of audio and videotaped interviews, examined hundreds of files that relate to the crash, and have returned to Roswell in an attempt to put all that information into the proper perspective. For the first time in Roswell in the 21st century, I have made a dispassionate reevaluation of all that material and provide a new look at what happened. This is a book that clears away all the clutter that has hidden the truth for so long, strips away the various lies that surround the case, exposes the Air Force attempts at cover-up, and found a core of solid information that tells us all where the case stands today. Roswell in the 21st Century will be available in just a few weeks. For more information, please visit my website at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. What happened in Benghazi is revealed by Nicholas Genix, author of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. He informs the American people that President Obama deceived them by advocating a strong foreign policy prior to the 2012 presidential election, and Hillary Clinton supported this deception. As the title infers, there is a connection between Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. Ample evidence informs Americans that Obama's early indoctrination in the Quran developed an infinity for Islam, why the Quran is the source of discontent in many countries, and why the Obama foreign policy deception led to poor military action and caused the loss of American lives in Benghazi. Genix provides 36 questions for the Select Committee on Benghazi to validate if Americans are justified to mistrust President Obama and Hillary Clinton. An overview of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi is presented on the website www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Afterlife expert Roberta Grimes was the first one to say that dying can be fun. Now her best-selling book, The Fun of Dying, is available in stores worldwide. So if you wonder whether death ends life, how it feels to die, or what heaven might be like, The Fun of Dying was written for you. And if you have always been afraid of death, or if you worry that your life has no meaning, let The Fun of Dying ease your fears and bring new meaning to your life. Nothing said in The Fun of Dying is based on the teachings of any religion. Instead, Roberta draws on evidence to explain how death happens, how it feels, and what comes next. A lot of the best death-related evidence was produced in the first half of the 20th century. When it is put together with recent discoveries, it tells a consistent and amazing story. 
Roberta Grimes blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Her wonderful book, The Fun of Dying, is available on Amazon and at stores worldwide wherever books are sold. Dr. Bob Thiel is our very special guest this hour. His website is www.thesecretsect.com. His book is 2012 and the Rise of the Secret Sect. Uh, first of all, Bob, it's always great having you here on the Exxon. Uh, we, we, you know, we cherish your friendship and we always look forward to when you're going to be coming back with us. Um, but over the break, you were, you were talking about the song that we used by Rem, It's the End of the World as We Know It. And I was wondering if you could share your comments with that. Certainly. I, the ch- song is very interesting because the lyrics are, it's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. Yeah. Well, I mentioned a few moments ago, this European Union formed yesterday an empire that's got 500 million people, mm-hmm. and nobody mm-hmm. knows it. That's because so it, was done feel, peace, it was done peacefully. Yes, the people feel fine. The Large Hadron Collider yep. was tested into the world record on Monday, and people feel fine. But these things actually happen. An Air Force general says the U.S. does not have enough satellites for its defense capability, and that didn't make the national news. Other than, oh, I saw it in the Aviation Week, but mm-hmm. I don't know if it made it. It was a big story. No. Nope. So in uh, the United States and Canada, most people do not realize these events are happening. So, yeah, those who have a job, at least, probably feel fine. But these things are, are, actually, are actually happening. Now, one thing I didn't mention at the break, if I, if I could for your listeners, sure. Any of your listeners who ordered a book today, we just printed out this, uh, these eight events, recent world events that lined up the predictions made in the book. So if anybody orders it today from our website, they'll automatically stick that in there. They'll get it as a bonus reporter so people can say, they can tell people, look, I bought this book. Look, these predictions the book talks about have already happened. And again, the book is highly documented. I have uh, 559 References, not counting scriptural references. I mean, it's a highly documented book. My writing style is to write and comment, and I mean, I mean, quote and comment. And so, people who want to find out the truth or learn more about this, I mean, I I think I've done a pretty good job of document. I think people will find it fascinating, for especially a lot of predictions they probably have never heard of. What are the what three predictions can you tell us that are going to be happening in the future that we should look for? Well, the, the biggest one I mentioned before, and that is there will be a peace deal uh, that uh, the Europeans are going to uh, confirm with the Middle East. That is probably the single biggest one. There will be other events that happen, but they're, they're a bit more difficult to look for. I think, for example, that eventually uh, uh-huh. apparitions that claim to be Mary, Jesus' mother, yes. I think some of those are going to start to become public. Uh, I, uh, that, I think, will be a major thing. That will get some people's attention. Uh, we should also be looking for the European Union itself to start becoming more significant military as well as economic power. Now, they're going to have ups and downs in Europe, by the way, and there probably will be some civil unrest in Europe as well. But uh, people have tended to not focus on Europe so much, but I think if you see what happens over there, you will find that ultimately... They are going to rise up, and again, their empire formed yesterday, officially. Dr. Bob, I want to thank you very much for joining us tonight. As always, a great pleasure having you on the show. If I don't have the opportunity of speaking to you on air or off air before December 25th, from our home to yours, a very Merry Christmas, safe, prosperous, and healthy New Year to you and your family, sir. Well, thanks for having me on your show. Take care of yourself, Dr. Bob. Dr. Bob Thiel has been my guest of this hour, Exxon Nation, www.thesecretsect.com. And the name of his book is 2012 and, and the Rise of the Secret Sect. I'll be back on the other side of the news at the top of the hour.